I really can't stand Hina after this episode. I know I'm a little bit late on this video upload, and you probably won't be seeing this until Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, but the point is, is that I can't stand Hina. She is a straight up snake. What she did to Natsuo really angered me. It really did. Anyone that can accept what she did to Natsuo in this episode, I don't know what to say. I mean, I understand some of her circumstances, and it makes her very human. That makes her a really good character. But in terms of wanting Natsuo to be with her, no. She is not someone that deserves Natsuo. She is not someone that really deserves anyone after what I just witnessed in this episode. So let's get right into that. Hina went to very extreme measures to get Natsuo to give up on her. In a lot of ways, I can respect that to some degree. She basically is like, oh, so you still love me and all that. So you want to go out? If we go out, you know, let's just go out together. And she drags him into the middle of the ocean, pretty much saying, oh, we need to end it all together. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, calm the hell down. Like, you're, you're literally jumping the fence right now, trying to do something like this. I'm like, calm down, Hina. And Natsu was in a state of disbelief as well. And when you see that scene, you're like, it was obvious the way she was doing that was just to shut down his feelings, to completely deny him of how he filled. And she was like saying, this is pretty much what would happen. Like, if we were to, so to say, get together and form a relationship, we would die socially. Or we would eventually be driven to the point to do something like this. That's kind of what Hina was trying to say to not so. And like I said, I can respect that. In some degree, I can't. But here's the reason why I'm upset with her. It's the fact that if she would have done that, even though it's extreme, I'm fine with it. But she still keeps leading Natsu on to making it feel like he has some hope with her. That's what she's doing. Like, the entire beginning of this episode, allowing him to go on a date with her, it's legit giving the man false hope. You're, you're being a jerk. You're straight up being an awful person. You're, you're giving a man that obviously is crushing on you false hope. You're awful. Just straight up say, no, I don't love you. I never will. End of it. That, that's what she could say. But she's not doing that. She's constantly giving him false hope to make him seem like everything's okay. But then she tears it all down and denies his feelings. And the man's all sorts confused. He doesn't know really how to feel. And he tries to deny Hina's feelings in this episode after that event because of what she did to him. And so she is really not a good person for what she is doing. She is being a snake. She is. And she was willing to do this, give the man false hope, these false vibes, to make it seem like she would go out with him, but then does stuff like that. I'm just like, what's the point in it? You just need to be direct with the man. And I'm just like, oh my god. Like, she is just doing everything in her power to make me dislike her as a person. Because she is not helpful. Like, she's... Having an affair with this other dude. Then she tries to play this snake game with Natsu and denies him completely and acts like she does. I'm just like, wh how can you do this? How can you live with yourself doing stuff like this? But then I realized her mentality is very warped and for her to even be able to have an affair like that, it makes sense that she would be completely fine doing what she's doing Natsu. Which, by the way, speaking of Natsu, he does make some solid progression in this episode once again the man he actually kisses Rui now this doesn't seem like anything too crazy I mean when you think about the first episode of the story and what happened between Rui and him then kissing isn't really that extreme but to them it is and the reason why is not just because of superficial means but kissing in their eyes is a sign of acceptance and true romance because Rui never looked at their intimacy, like, you know, what happened in the first episode, like something that was very vital. Like, she didn't look at it romantically. She just wanted to experiment, and she didn't really care. But kissing is something else. It holds a lot of weight to her, and that's what Natsu feels as well. And so when you see that scene with how 
they kiss, it basically means that they were confirming each other's feelings. And Nato doesn't really know how to feel either. He's very aware that Rui is crushing on him. Like, he's very aware of it. And Rui is not aware of it. She's not aware of her personal feelings. This is probably one of her first few times in her entire life she's had a crush on someone. So she doesn't really know what she's feeling. Nato does. And he's in a very conflicted situation right now. Because he remembers what Hina just told him prior to that scene. And how if you were to have a relationship like this, it would completely end you socially. Like, you would not have your life. You would have to... Get up, leave, change your names, disown your family, disown your family, friends, whatever, and have your own life. Because you will never be able to have a normal life whatsoever if you're discovered. That's kind of what was being implied there. And he was thinking of that, which put him in a very complicated, you know, situation with her. And so, because of his anger with what Hina did to him, he denied her and then decided to go with Rui, which, like I said, is dangerous. It's very dangerous, and that's why I don't like Hina. She's putting Natsu in a point to where it's actually harming him. I'm not saying I don't want Natsu to end up with Rui. I'm just saying the way she's doing things, she's harming Natsu's future because of how she's handling her own problems as a person. Now, anyways, let's talk about um, the scene with the library club, or the literature club. So... Everything's progressing. We have four members in the club, which means the girl with green hair, she's no longer really alone. She actually does have people she can, you know, can communicate with. She can actually talk with people and, you know, just have fun. She doesn't feel like she's so isolated and she needs the teacher always there to, you know, have company for her. She actually has someone. And I'm just so happy that not so can go there, not give, you know, false vibes and just straight up, you know, just tell it like it is and just have a friendly relationship, which by the way, I find that very interesting. When I think about the previous episodes and how his relationship is with the two other girls that were introduced, not so has a lot of balls he straight up denied them he's like look i don't want a relationship with you i just want a friendship that's what he said kind of two times in a row already in different ways but he not doesn't have the balls to say it so i i find it interesting that in a lot of ways not so is an adult compared to hina and even though Hina is the one that's like, you're like a child, and Natsu is reflecting on it thinking he's a child, he's actually an adult in this situation compared to Hina. She's acting very childish. And also, let's talk about the whole room situation with what she did towards the end. With the door open, you're not going to tell me you didn't purposely do that. There's just no way. There, there's no way. There, there's just no way she did not purposely do that. I, I don't believe it. I, I don't believe that was on accident. There, there's just no way, after everything that happened this episode, with Hina's discussion with Natsu and all that, that that door would be left open with a crack for Natsu could stand and look. There's just... I don't believe it. I really don't. I, I, I cannot believe a scene like that. So, I think Hina, once again, doing stuff that's giving Natsu false hope. Leading him on, you know, a stray to where he doesn't know what he wants, and she's probably just straight up enjoying that, because she doesn't really know what she wants to in the first place, too. I don't like that about her. So, in conclusion, I think that Rui is best girl, and Hina is obviously worst girl, or, you know, I guess snake girl, because she is... Just not good for Natsu. I think in the long term, she's just going to be toxic, bad for him, and probably whittle him down to where he thinks it's okay to play with people's feelings. Because, I mean, this episode, it clearly wanted us to see how different Natsu and Hina is as people. Because Hina, someone, like I said, gives false flags, vibes, and all that makes you think that she is okay with you, but then says, like, I don't want to be with you. While you have Natsu, he's just straight up, upfront about his feelings. And he's like, you know what? I don't want to be with you. You, I have no interest in you, and so usually he turns people down rather quickly. And the only person he's really having a struggle with to actually do this with is Rui because of their complicated relationship that they had in the early stages of the series on episode one. But even then, it's not like he's being vicious like Hina's doing to him. He's actually doing it, and he's aware of his feelings, and he's not really with anyone like Hina, so it's just like he's yet to decide. Overall, his position is different, but it wanted to show us how different Hina and not so is and that you know who is a good person and who is really a bad person but uh yeah it's um it's a good episode of domestic girlfriend in terms of what it tried to do with the whole not so stuff in hina 
And I do want to see Rui progress as a person. She is progressing. I want her to fully confirm her feelings for Natsu and admit that she's in love with him. I do wonder where that will go if the parents find out or something. But I'll leave it at that. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content of, you know, domestic girlfriend, you know, please, you know, subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. Because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified. So if you do want to get notified, hit that bell icon. And even if you don't do it for me, at the very least, do it for the other YouTubers you do care about. Because it does help us out a lot. And so guys, I love you. Be safe. She be out.